Hello and welcome to Thursday, April the 7th, and today we're talking about we have a personal problem. Now, this week we've been looking at the questions that people ask, and we looked at the number one question, which is why do bad things happen to good people? And we gave the overview on Tuesday, and then yesterday on Wednesday we looked at the first one that in this world we will have hardship. Now, if you haven't looked at the overview, you might want that before this one. But today, having looked at the fact that we live in a fallen world and that is going to impact us, now we need to look at the second reason that bad things happen to good people, and that is we have a personal problem. That is, we personally struggle. Now, as we look in James 1.13, we read these words, when tempted, no one should say, God, is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desires he is dragged away and enticed. And then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Now, here's the progress of what is taking place there. Every single one of us have temptations in our life. Now, some of those are temptations toward things that would truly be moral uh, sin. They would be ungodliness. They would be things that are completely and totally unhealthy. Uh, other areas uh, we are drawn to. Uh, temptation might be the wrong word, but there are things that we are drawn to, such as relationships. Now, are relationships unhealthy? Not necessarily, but sometimes we're drawn to unhealthy relationships because of a wound or a brokenness or something that needs to be healed with inside of us. However it goes, we can't go, well, God, why do you always keep giving me bad people? Why do you always keep giving me horrible relationships? And to realize that there are areas where God is trying to make us whole, make us healthy. Every one of us have a tendency to be drug away by our desires and enticed. And if we discover that those desires don't lead us to health, then we're going to need freedom from that the same way we would from moral sin. There are different types of, of uh, relationships, not just uh, uh, love relationships, but friendships that we go to because they're comfortable, but they're not healthy. So we have to look at this principle. And the principle is, when we begin, whatever we allow into our life begins to affect who we are, how we move forward, how we progress. For instance, if I, by nature of a lot of woundedness or hurt, tend to be very negative, the tendency is I'll draw around myself a lot of people who vibrate with a vibe of negativity because it feeds that that's already in me. But what happens when I hang around negative people all the time? I have a bad attitude. I have a, a nasty outlook on life. Now, I may be drawn to those people, and I may avoid relationships with people who are just all happy all the time because, they, you know, because it's not comfortable. But what I have to realize is what is the long-term fruit? And we read in Galatians 6, 8, it says, the one who sows to please the sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit from the Spirit will reap everlasting or eternal life. So what we invest in is going to make a difference in our life. I have people all the time who go, well, if God really loved me, he, you know, he wouldn't give me all this heartache and all this struggle. And sometimes I look at the relationships that they surround themselves, at the people that they let into their lives, at the influences that are going on, and you realize there's this downward spiral of unhealthy, negative situations all around them. Guys, we've got to learn they affect us. They change our attitude, our outlook, our ability to, uh, to be healthy, to be resilient, and to bounce back from disappointments or discouragements. All of that stuff makes a difference. Now, we read in Romans 8.13, it says, For those who live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body and you will live because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons 
of God. And here's what I've learned. When I begin to resonate with the presence of the Spirit of God, when I begin to let the Word of God, as Scripture says, dwell in me richly, those things that Paul says that are just, that are pure, that are good report, if there's excellence or they're praiseworthy, focus and think on those things. Fill my head, my mind, my life, my attitude, everything with those things things. And what begins to happen is the Spirit of God begins to take that and lead me toward health and life. I have, you have, we have a personal problem. None of us is completely healthy. Every one of us at certain points do not walk according to what the Word of God says. And, you know, I'm not sitting here going, that makes you a horrible person. You're so bad. You are so... No, it makes that area of our life unhealthy. And if we continue to walk in those unhealthy places, it has a response. And the response to an unhealthy life is negative, destructive disaster. As we read in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. What does it say? If we sow to the negative we're going to reap destruction. If we sow to the Spirit, we reap life. If we have wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. When we are tempted, we have to recognize that there are things that are very easy for us to be drawn into. A lot of our brokenness, a lot of our woundedness, a lot of that stuff leads us to feel more comfortable in dysfunction than to press into what is really life and health. But guys, until we get our personal problem fixed, God is not going to grab us by the throat and make us healthy in spite of ourselves. He has asked us to walk with him. He said those who are live by the Spirit have to keep in step with the Spirit. And that requires maturity. It requires discipline. It requires going, this is healthy, this is unhealthy, this is something I should focus on, this is something I have to reject. You've heard me several times in our devotions talk about the uh, scripture that says, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. And what that means is every time I have a thought that comes over my head and I go, that is not a God thought, i got to reject that. I have to war against it, fight, go, I'm not going to let that thought begin to have free reign in my head. I'm going to focus on the things that are just, that are pure, that are good report. Because what we let germinate in our mind, what we let germinate in our heart, in our spirit, in our attitude, that is going to dictate whether or not we have life or whether or not we have death. We cannot let everything around us mold us into who we are. We have to let that that resides within us change from the inside out who we are. And the Spirit of God dwells in me. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Every one of us have access to allow the Spirit of God to empower us. So guys, we have a world problem. And the world is, is always going to impact us, but it doesn't have to make us unhealthy. As we talked about yesterday, we have an us problem. And every single one of us at some area is going to have to war and fight to stay away from dysfunctional attitudes, behaviors, and patterns that will constantly have a, you know, when we sow into those, we reap back that dysfunction. And we can't blame God for it, James says. We can't go, well, God, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't deliver me from this. He, didn't, he, didn't. he said, I will go with you, but I'm not going to grab you by the throat and make you do this. You're going to have to walk this thing out. You're going to have to take uh, the principles that I've given you, and you're going to have to make them alive in your life. And when we focus and when we fight for healthy, our life changes. The Spirit of God changes our heart, our attitude, our mind, and our actions. Now let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that, Lord, you are able to do what we are unable to do. But, Father, you're not going to do it in spite of us. You're going to do it in concert with us. So, Father, as we look at these passages and realize that we have a personal problem, Every single one of us struggle in, in at least one or two areas, most of us in multiple areas. And until we submit those to you, until we realize that sowing to those negative areas always brings about destruction in our life, sowing to that sinful nature, that fallen 
lost, dysfunctional nature always brings death into our life. But when we begin to turn and focus and sow into the things of the Spirit, they in turn bring life into us. And Father, that you will help us to war, that we will take every thought captive, that we will not be conformed according to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can test and approve what your will is, your good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so, Father, I thank you that you will walk with us, that you will empower us, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to do that work in and through us when we are allowing it to take place and looking and eagerly expecting for you to be there. So, Father, we ask that you would continue to keep us vigilant. Help us as we see the, uh, the barometer of our attitude dipping. Lord, as we see the uh, crowd that we hang with uh, not bearing forth fruit. Lord, as we see all these outward signs that you would very quickly show us our face in the mirror and let us see that we have a personal problem. And that, Lord, as we war to allow your Holy Spirit to be in control rather than the natural course of our dysfunctional life, that, Father, you will set us free. And so we look for you to do that powerful work in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, I wish I could just tell you it's all easy. All you have to do is say one prayer and everything will be wonderful. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to fight. And yet it is the most rewarding, most incredible life that we can ever have. And God has made it possible. He has said, if you will sow into the Spirit, I will bust out life in every area. So let's go get it. Sound good? I'll see you tomorrow.